I've been working with AWS for many years now. I hold several certifications, and obviously I create content to teach other people. But the way I got here has not been super straightforward, and I'll admit the learning journey has been a little frustrating and overwhelming at times, which I think maybe you can relate to. AWS has over 200 services, which in itself is overwhelming, but then there's also millions of resources out there for learning and for certification, and it's hard to know where to start, even when you look at the official AWS learning path. Personally, I ended up piecemealing a bunch of things together over the years, and I did a whole bunch of trial and error. So in this video, I want to share how I would go about learning AWS if I had to start all over today. And hopefully this will help some of you out there who are just getting started. I've pulled together a rough roadmap here in Google Docs. I will put this link in the video description. There's lots and lots of links in here. For the most part, things are out on YouTube and they're going to be free. I do have a couple of courses, but free for the most part in this document. Now, this is not meant to be a full, comprehensive list of content. This is not a course or anything to go through. You don't just go through these links and expect to know everything about AWS. But it's meant to give you some structure and help you identify those areas where you need to spend more time. For example, if you're coming into this not knowing much about networking, and you watch this big picture video here and think, gosh, I have no idea how DNS works, then you know that you need to go off and find additional resources about that, or any of the other topics here. So learning how to learn is actually a very critical skill in AWS or any technology today, really, because things change so fast. So this is really just meant to be a baseline to get you started. But let's back up and talk about what even is AWS. It's basically a giant network, and more specifically, it's a network of virtual machines. In AWS land, those machines are called EC2 instances. And yes, there are other things like storage and databases and so on, but big picture, it's a giant network of servers, and rather than them living in your office or your data center, everything lives in Amazon's data centers. So you're gonna need to understand virtual machines, how to interact with them on the command line, and largely that's gonna mean Linux commands, AWS does support Windows and other operating systems, but I would say Linux is primarily what you're going to use in the real world. And then you need to understand the basics of how they communicate, so basics of networking. And it wouldn't hurt to know at least one programming language. So back to our Google Doc. That brings us to this section here, and I'm calling this core technical skills. These are not specific to AWS, but they will help hugely when you do get to learning the AWS parts. All right, starting with the virtual machines, or VMs. VMs allow you to run multiple virtual machines on just a single physical machine, which is a core concept behind cloud computing. Cloud computing wouldn't really even be possible if it weren't for virtualization technologies. So this one is important. I've included a YouTube video here from Network Chuck. He's got an awesome channel, by the way, if you haven't found him yet. And then next we have networking. This was probably the hardest thing for me to pick up when I got started. My background is as a developer, so this networking stuff was not super familiar to me. Somehow I never even had to take networking when I went to school a million years ago, and so I really struggled here. If somebody had just sat me down and said, AWS is a giant network and this is a critical skill to have, I think my life would have been much easier. So this is a critical skill to have and you need to understand this. This video here is not a deep dive on networking and none of it is specific to AWS, but it's a good high level look at how things work on the web generally. So things like request and response pattern, DNS, how code is rendered in your browser and that kind of a thing. And then moving on to Linux commands. This was also a struggle for me. I spent most of my career in the Microsoft ecosystem. So Linux was a big shift. And if you're in the same boat, it would be hugely helpful for you to learn basic Linux commands. And I've got a video here for that. And then the last core skill is going to be a programming language. Now there's some strong opinions out there about programming languages, if they're necessary, which ones to focus on, and so on. And it's true that for some roles in AWS, you're not going to need programming at all. But in my mind, it can only help if you understand at least one. If for no other reason, then you can better understand what the other people on your team are doing, like the developers. And I think it also helps you think more like a computer, with logic, like if statements, for loops, objects, functions, and so on. And if I had to pick just one language, which I have done here, I think Python will take you far. It's a very versatile language. You can use it for simple scripting. You can write entire apps with it. And it's also really heavily used today in machine learning and artificial intelligence. 
data science, that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in those areas, Python will be a really good one for you. And I think generally it's pretty easy for beginners to pick up as opposed to some of the other languages out there. So I've included a video here for the basics of Python. If you already know another programming language, don't feel like you have to learn Python. But if you don't know anything and you're trying to pick just one, then this is the one that I would suggest. If you're finding this helpful so far, give me a thumbs up on the video. Thank you so much. Okay, now let's move down to the core AWS concepts and services. Now, I mentioned earlier that there are 200 plus services in AWS. You are definitely not going to need to know all of those. And I would guess that even most people at AWS don't know all of those. But you do need to know some core concepts and services, which I've tried to summarize here. So first, you need to understand how the AWS global infrastructure is put together. This is pretty simple. This video, I think, is about three minutes going through regions, availability zones, and edge locations. And this is what makes up the infrastructure across the world in AWS. Then you're going to need to know Identity and Access Management, or IAM. This is the core service around security. You can add users, give them permissions, set up groups and roles, and that kind of thing. So I've included one of my videos here for the basics of that. And then moving on to compute. The core service for compute is Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2. These are the virtual servers that I talked about earlier. I've got a basics video here for that. And then serverless is also more and more popular today, with Lambda being the primary service here. Serverless doesn't really mean that there are no servers. It just means that you don't have to set up the server, provision it, configure it, shut it down and all of that. You just write code in the case of Lambda and AWS will take care of the underlying infrastructure for you. So those are two core services for compute. Next, we have networking. So up here, we talked about networking generally. In this section here, this is AWS specific networking. The virtual private cloud or VPC is the primary service here. This is basically your private network within the AWS network. So I included a basics video there. And then as far as how things work with IP addressing and CIDRs, that will be super helpful for you to know, especially if you don't have a strong networking background. So I've included that video. And then security groups are basically your firewalls that sit around your instances. So we could put security groups up here under EC2, but I've included them here under networking. They're really important to understand because if you don't get them right, then nothing else is going to work. So I've got a short video there about security groups. Moving on to storage. So let's say that you're building a website and you need somewhere to drop your image files, your videos, your log files, and that kind of stuff. Typically, that doesn't go into a database. Instead, you really just need kind of a folder to put things in. And in AWS, that is the simple storage service at REST3. This is object storage. They're called S3 buckets. I've got a short video here about the basics for S3. And then moving on to databases, there are lots of different databases you can use in AWS, but I've included the two primary services here. First is for the relational database service, which is relational databases like SQL Server, and then the non-relational or NoSQL, this is going to be DynamoDB. So I've included that link as well. And then lastly, under the core concepts, I've got five tips or tricks here as you're getting started. So this includes things like the free tier, very important as far as costs go, setting up a budget. So you don't want to end up with a big surprise bill. Unfortunately, it probably is going to happen to every one of us. It's definitely happened to me. But setting up a budget will send you an alert when you reach a particular threshold, say $5, $10, or whatever it is. So to walk you through how to set up a budget, how to figure out your costs with Cost Explorer, multi-factor authentication, and then using the root account versus IAM user accounts. So all just good tips to know as you're getting started. All right, let's move down to AWS projects. But before we dive in here, I want to tell you a quick story. This past summer, I took an off-road navigation and orienteering class, which if you don't know, this is basically where you get coordinates, latitude and longitude, and a lot of them. You have to plot them on a map and then figure out how to drive there. And I had some basic compass skills in this area, but I quickly realized that I didn't know much. But there was a full day of classroom training talking about maps and scales and plotting and headings and declination and triangulation and route planning and all of this. And it was just a bunch of kind of disjointed topics and pretty overwhelming, which is very similar to learning AWS. But the second day, 
they sent us out to the wilderness and we had to find those points and drive there. And I just had this sense of like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what I'm doing. I learned all these concepts yesterday. I don't know how to apply them. I don't know how things work together. Kind of this sense of freak out. But I'll tell you, I learned more in that second day of just being forced to put all the pieces together and figure it out. I learned way more than I would have just sitting in a classroom learning more concepts. And I think that's actually how most of us learn best. We just go do it. Or kind of like riding a bike. Somebody can tell you how to ride a bike. You can watch somebody else ride a bike. But until you just go do it, you're not going to be able to ride the bike. So that's my story. But back to the AWS projects, it's going to be very similar. You're going to have a bunch of disjointed concepts and services in your head. You're going to have no idea how they fit together. And you really won't until you go build something. So I can't stress enough how important it is to go build projects, pull together multiple services. You are definitely going to struggle. Stuff is not going to work. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to have to troubleshoot. You're going to have to go to Google a lot. But this is where things really start to stick. And luckily, there are lots of resources available too. And on my YouTube channel, I've got a playlist with lots of different projects you can build. All of these include multiple services, getting them all working together. And these do tend to go kind of step by step. So if you just follow along, you should have a fully working project when you're done. And I explain as we go what the different pieces are, how they talk to each other, and all of that. AWS also has a lot of hands-on labs that you can work through. And you can filter these down by category. You'll see the length here, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So these tend to be a little bit shorter, but most of them do involve multiple AWS services. There are also workshops. These tend to be a little bit more advanced or more involved. You'll see the levels here, level 300. So level 100 is beginner, level 400 is advanced but three hours, four hours, two hours, but a lot of good hands-on stuff here. The filtering here is not as good as it could be. Basically, you'll need to select a category up here on top to filter things down. So it might take you a little while to find exactly what you want, but once you find them, these workshops are actually pretty good. And then we have the well-architected labs. These are also a little bit more involved, a little bit more advanced, and kind of tend to target the architects, obviously, and are based on the pillars of the well-architected framework. So say, for example, you're interested in security, and you can start the security workshop. Okay. There's also another playlist out here on YouTube from Adrian Cantrill. He's got a lot of really good content on AWS. These are mini projects, and he does a good job with diagramming and really explaining how all the different pieces fit together. So no shortage of projects and hands-on work that you can do here, but I would say the best way is to really just come up with your own ideas. Say that you want to build a photo sharing app on AWS or create a blog site from scratch or a chat bot or something like that. Just come up with a thing that you want to build and then go out there and figure out which pieces you need to make it work. Okay, a few other resources here. The AWS forums, this is called repost. This community is very active. It's a good place to ask your questions, find answers. There are a lot of AWS folks who monitor these boards, so it's a really good resource. The AWS blog. So there's new things happening all the time, and this blog is a good way to keep up to date with what's going on. There's also another blog out here called AWS in Plain English. I like this one a lot. A lot of the articles are written in plain English and easy to understand. Some of them are tutorials as well with step-by-step -step instructions of how to do something in AWS, which is great. And then last week in AWS, this is kind of a blog slash newsletter. There are podcasts on here. And it's just another way to keep up with all the things coming out of AWS. Okay, finally, certifications. There are lots of different opinions out there about certifications, whether they're necessary, whether they're a waste of time, whether they will help you get a job, and so on. In my mind, it's never going to hurt you to have a certification. I have lots of them for AWS and other technologies. I find they give you a nice structure, and they give you something to work towards. They're kind of a forcing function for learning something, and you tend to get more comprehensive learning, I find, because of all the different topics that are included in the exam guide. That said, I wouldn't rely solely on a certification. Some of these things that we've talked about above, like the projects, 
are going to be way more helpful in the real world to help you understand how things fit together and actually work. But if you are interested in certifications, check out the certification homepage here on AWS. They've got certification paths, preparation. There are lots of certifications available. If you're just getting started, I would recommend going with Cloud Practitioner, and that will set you up with the foundational concepts to do other things like sysops, developer, solutions architect, and so on. And then I do have a couple of certification prep classes out on Zero to Mastery. If you're interested in those, check out those links. But that's about it for this video. I just really wanted to give you some structure, kind of a roadmap, areas to focus on depending on your background, and some of the core concepts and services to understand as you're getting started. If you found this helpful, I'll let YouTube know by giving me a thumbs up on the video, and also consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching.